and welcome to my channel. I'm Andre, and this is Rico, my husband. So, being a Beaujolais, Beaujolais wines are normally drunk at slightly lower temperature, and I'm going to put this wine in the fridge just for maybe 10 15 minutes before we open it. So, 10 15 minutes is quite a long time. Does it really need to go into the fridge? A wee glass to be going with, and then your next glass will be the wine will be slightly chilled. had us all in your glass here. <laughs> We're going to have some roasted peppers, some pan fried mushrooms and I'm going to make a wee sort of sauce for the steaks, more like a topping. We've got some Highland Strathon blue cheese here from Scotland. Two of these steaks are sirloin, two are fillets. He bought the side of beef and he gave it to a butcher friend of his. They've been dry aged for 60 days, oil and, and garlic and then we're just going to simply roast them in the oven. Have you... We're going to season the steaks, just put some oil on them. Have the mushrooms going in now. So that's the uh, roasted peppers out there. <laughs> Enjoying a roast pepper look. Look having a wee refill. Luke is now tasting the steak which is kind of a medium rare. So that's the, uh, the blue, blue cheese, cheese with port. and the port mixture going on the So there we go. That's dinner this evening. So we have chips, we have mushrooms, we have the peppers, and we have some syrup. Because I do like cheese, blue cheese and port on the steak. It truly tastes amazing. I've got the sticks with me. Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Andre and this is Rico, my husband. We are here to review another wine for you and to cook up another recipe. Before we get started, I invite you to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Remember, we love to see a thumbs up. And whilst you're subscribing, and maybe if you haven't already, press that bell that goes ding that will notify you every time we upload a video. I upload a variety of videos, not just wine reviews or recipes. I like to talk about luxury and I share a great deal of our lives too. So let's get on with the wine review because that's why we're here. What are we eating and drinking today, Rico? Well, first of all, we're drinking a Beaujolais, actually you mean Beaujolais. Beaujolais is a most famous region in France, produces 99% red wines. I don't think I've had, ever had a wine from Beaujolais that was white, but the statistics are 99% red wines. This particular wine is from Georges de Beauf, who is con considered by many as Mr. Beaujolais himself, and it's a brewery spelt B-R-O-U-I-L-L-Y but pronounced brew and ye. The, the double L is silent. silent. It's an Appalachian an AOC and there are 10 individual AOCs in the Beaujolais region and brew ye is the furthest south. Other ones that come to mind are Fleury and Morgon and that's what comes to mind. This particular one is 13% by volume. It will be a medium bodied wine being a Beaujolais and it will be a wine that has low tannins and this I think is a wine that I would recommend to some of you people who have asked in the past about wines that, that enjoy a red wine but it gives them a headache. This is the wine for you. Okay, what is a tannin? <laughs> you caught me there. <laughs> Tannins in a wine, when you get a full bodied wine that's heavy and when you taste it, and the tannins is what you, you taste around your mouth and it draws those cheeks in. You feel the dryness of the wine, it's so full bodied. But this being lighter, you don't have those heavy tannins. When you drink this, when you drink a red, I know. 
you yourself in, when you drink a red, what you don't like is when it goes and it draws those jaws in. That's the only way I, I could describe them. So basically the dryness of it. Well, no. the, the, this will be quite fruity. Right. This should be quite fruity. So tannins, is, does that mean the dryness of the wine? And the fullness, that's what gives you the tannins and you, and you get the tannins at the back of your cheeks and down so the back of your mouth. The grape here is a gammy and this is what makes Beaujolais wines. So the grape is a gammy, I've never heard gammy, of that grape before. G-A-M-E-Y right, okay. and the, the wine will be very, should be very fruity, that's how it should be. We haven't tasted it yet so we don't know if it is, but it should be fruity. There should be raspberry and cranberry and things like that. You should be able to taste fruit because gammy is a fruity grape and also gammy the, the skin on the gammy grape is thin and thin skinned grapes give lower tannins. I'm going to ask you another question, yes. I'm going to put you on the spot again. So when you describe wines, you always compare them to other fruits, right? You always say you, there's a peach, there's a raspberry, there's a cranberry. Yeah. Why are wines compared to other fruits? Because they're made from grape, it's a grape. Why why well, why are they then said this is a peach like this is a the buttery this is where do those flavours come from? Why why are grapes taking on these other flavours? Well don't forget the grapes have been pressed and when the grape is pressed and the alcohol is produced and everything, the flavours change. There's a process that occurs. And I would imagine that's what it is, and part of the terroir or where, they, where they're planted. There must be other things in that region. So you're must... saying there's peaches nearby in the flavour? Oh, no, no, I don't no. mean that. I don't, I'm no. Not, not, not by that, but just the whole process of it's the It's just a comparison yes, of a taste? Yes, yes, of like what's make, coming with the out. sweetness, yes. the sourness. There's, a, there's no peach in it, there's no raspberry in it, but you, you taste those notes. Some people talk about, when they taste a, a, big, a big wine, like some of these uh, heavy Amarones and whatever, they talk about cigar coming out of the wine and the earth and mushroom and whatever. But everybody tastes something different in the wine. That's exactly what Every I Every person is not the same. And people give, I would imagine people give all these notes on wines, but not everybody's the same. Not everybody's palate is the same. And it depends what you, you, you search for in a wine. And I think the most important thing of when you drink a wine is you drink it because you enjoy it. Okay, we're having this today because we're going to have steaks, just as an accompaniment. But I don't not have a problem with having a good white wine with my steak. I do not have a problem with that. Other people do, but I don't. So basically, we're having red today because we have our youngest here and he would rather have a red than a white, is that right? Look, you don't really enjoy a, a white wine. That's true. That's, That's true. true. So, we are having red. I'm not, like I've said many a time before, I'm not really a red wine drinker. There's only, there's very few red wines I enjoy. But uh, yeah, Rico's nudging me because he's saying he's not finished with the wine. Carry on, Rico. Carry on. Uh, as I did say earlier, it's 13%. It's a screw cap. <laughs> It's a Beaujolais, <coughs> Gammy Grape, forgot what I was going to a say. Screw cap? Screw cap, still in closure. <laughs> yeah. We, I bought this particular one from Sainsbury's, who have an excellent selection of wines, £10 from Sainsbury's, and but you can buy lower priced Beaujolais, just as, possibly just as good, and they would, a lot of them would be Beaujolais Village. When you go into a supermarket you will see a Beaujolais Village and what that is is it would be grapes from these 10 villages that are mixed together to make a Beaujolais. So this isn't like that? No, this one is allowed to put the name of Bruy on it because that's one of the villages in the in the region of Beaujolais that has is an appellation, an AOC What's an AOC? Appellation de origin control. Right, okay. The control dot grapes that come out of a specific region. Like champagne. Right, so this is an AOC from Beaujolais. 
and Bruye is one of the AOCs. There are ten of them, ten villages that can put their name on the line. Bruye, Fleury, Mordon, Moulinavant. That's it. so. Being a Beaujolais, Beaujolais wines. I've normally drunk at slightly lower temperature, and I'm going to put this wine in the fridge just for maybe 10-15 minutes before we open it. So it's, I think then it'll be ready for drinking, and that should release the, the flavours of the fruit in the wine. And Luke is really quite desperate to taste this. So 10-15 minutes is quite a long time. Does it really need to go into the fridge? Well, the makers, George de Boeuf, say can be drank at room temperature, whatever room temperature may be. We had this conversation before. But the room temperature in here just now is quite warm and I think it would benefit from going in the fridge for 10-15 minutes just before we open. Look, Luke would like a glass just now. I'm so going to open it and allow Luke to taste it now. Right. And then he can taste it after, after it's been in the that's fridge a good idea. for 10 or 15 minutes. So that's yeah. actually a good idea. Yes. Right, so okay, let's go with this. Let's go with this. So, we've opened the wine. No cork to smell, it's just a... So, I'll give you... A wee glass to be going with, and then your next glass will be the wine will be slightly chilled. Do you smell any of the set floral to you at there's the a, moment? There's a fruit in it. Do you smell fruit? Yeah, it smells like strawberry. There Does it? Mm -hmm. What about when you taste taste the wine? It shouldn't draw your jaws in. It should be quite light and fruity in the mouth and. No, I disagree. It's okay. quite, it's quite acrid. Acrid, um, as in acidic. It like does it feels dry. Well, then we're going to taste it when it's slightly chilled. Right, look, I'm, we'll I'm, see if it makes a I'm, I'm, I'm interested now to see if it does make a difference. So I'm going to have a wee sip. Right? <laughs> it's not bad. Yeah. I would say it does taste quite dry as well, um, but it's not a heavy wine, it is medium bodied. Oh, and I also so got a wee, when I sort of tasted it, I got a wee taste of vanilla. There we go. Okay, and we'll see how it compares yes. um, once you've uh, once it's been chilled slightly. Okay, I of course I need to have a taste as well. So look, you've had us all in your glass here. <laughs> It smells kind of good for a red, actually. What does it smell like? I'm not getting all these, I'm not getting floral. What did you say you got from it? Strawberry. 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 Right, not like real strawberries, like strawberry flavouring. I could smell on it the, like a strawberry tart or something. The aroma. The aroma. The jelly. Whatever. Actually, I'm not. It's actually a really nice red, a very smooth red. Yeah, that's the, the tannins are not heavy. Yeah, you're, not, you're right. You don't get. Really you're not getting yes. any of that. Yeah. You're not even it's getting. Sometimes, sometimes with red, you get that roughness on your tongue. That yeah. kind of. I hate that feeling with a red, but you don't. You're not getting that on your tongue. It's normally at the back of your tongue. You, you get it. See, see when you if if you. Eat the wine a wee bit in your mouth. Do you get vanilla? There's wee hints of vanilla when it goes down, aren't No. no. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm being honest, I'm no. not getting vanilla, but it is a very, I think it's a very light red. Would you agree? Uh, like, for a red, it's, it's very light. Yeah, it's very light. The, this is what it's all about. One gets vanilla, one gets strawberry, different things in the taste, and you get this. That's what you were saying. Different Everybody, opinions every, yes, on the wine. Everybody's palate is very different. Very but different. I, I quite yeah. like this. It seems like an easy drinking wine. But then again, we will compare once it's been cooled slightly. Here, Luke, you can have your wine back. <laughs> Just to run through the ingredients, first of all, we're going to have some steaks. We're going to have some roasted peppers, some pan fried mushrooms, and I'm going to make a wee sort of sauce for the steaks, more like a topping. 
We've got some Highland Strathdon blue cheese here from Scotland and we're going to mix that with some nice port. Two of these steaks are sirloin, two are fillets. The sirloins were given to us by a good friend of ours who's actually uh, Kelly's brother. He bought the side of beef and he gave it to a butcher friend of his. They've been dry aged for 60 days, 50 or 60 days, and he brought us two steaks in to try for our dinner. So why do they do that to steaks? Does it make the steak any tastier? Well, Does it not go off? Does no, it? No, because it's when you're dry aging a steak, it's put in a fridge in a compartment and that compartment's not open so it's dry aged. So the air is not getting to it. It's not a place where you, if you put, if you hang your meat in a fridge, you imagine big fridges, they're walk-in fridges, and you hang your meat in a fridge, people are walking in and out, so the air is getting in. So that, you can't hang meat there forever. So normally meat is hung in a fridge for maybe 20 or 30 days or whatever. But when it's dry aged like that, it's put in a compartment. So that compartment's not open, so it's dry. There's no moisture getting into it. So what does that do to the meat? Does it... It basically dries it. There should be no blood in the steak. It should cook very quickly when it cooks. So does it make it more tender? It the meat. Yeah, they say so. Normal beef, a normal steak, do they hang it for any length of time? No, well, good, good butchers normally hang meat for about 30 days. Can you eat meat that's not been hung? Yes, you can, but it's not as good. Right, okay. So looking at the steaks, I mean, the colour still looks really good. It hasn't, like you would expect, a steak that's been hanging around for a while to have changed colour. This still, I mean, this still looks like a, a, a good, fresh steak. Yes. I saw the pictures of, of of the meat before he cut the steaks, before he boned it right. and cut the steaks and the outside was black and you have to take that off, it is, it was, right. it's, it's not moulded but it's got a crust on it and you take that part off. So this makes, this process makes this steak very expensive, like Thomas, makes, what, makes what did Thomas awesome. pay for this, like do you know? I'm not sure, but I think he paid ninety pounds or hundred pounds for, for the, the bit of beef he bought. Which he, he bought it at the abattoir. Right. He actually went to the abattoir with the butcher friend, and they bought it together. And Thomas's label was put on it. Put a label on it, and the guy had it in his fridge for sixty days or whatever. So that's our ingredient. So you're basically going to grill the steaks in a pan, roast the peppers. Add I'm, not, I'm not grilling the steaks. I'm putting them in a pan. Right. Okay. Well, we'll follow you as you do. So, Rico. He's been cheeky again. Right, let's get started. How's your wine? It's good. No, it's done. <laughs> you were just enjoying the commentary there, weren't you? Let, less tasting, more drinking is what I say with it. Right, okay. So, we've got the bell peppers and we're going to drizzle them with some oil and, and garlic. And then we're just going to simply roast them in the oven. Have you put salt, pepper, or nope, anything? Nothing. Nope, nothing. Nothing. Nope. So, are you going to skin them once they're out, or are we just eating them the way they are? I think we'll just eat them the way they are. Okay, so they're just going into the oven yep. as simple as that, just yep. drizzled with yep. oil and garlic. Nice and plain. And into the, yep. into the oven. We'll put them in the oven now, okay? Let them roll. High, low, medium heat? 200 degrees. So here we have the griddle that's ready for the steaks. So it's just opening up the blue cheese now. Yeah. Are you going to microwave that to melt it? No? No, I'm not. Oh, it's just going to melt when you put it over the hot steak. I'm just going to put it in the, in the bowl there. Yeah. And we'll add some pork to it. Just to, and just let that sit there and the, the blue cheese should draw in the pork and it'll be ready to go on the steaks. We're going to season the steaks, just put some oil on them and then just some salt and pepper. Some pepper. And then we'll just do the other side. So just again the and same thing on the other side. Oil, yeah. 
Have you got that those pans heating at the moment? I've just put the, the down low. I'm going to turn the turn the the one for the steaks up just now. So it has been heating, but on yeah, a on a very, low very heat. Low. I'll turn the other one up as well. Ready for the mushrooms. And that one. That's one fillet, one sirloin. Do yeah. they cook at the same rate? Well, I'm going to cook this one quick quicker than that, and then I'm going to take that one out and put the next steak in because this one's going to be rarer. Which okay. is depending whether yeah. you like it rare, medium, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So okay. Put it in like that. Because that was too long. Put it in that. Um, right. So if it, if these were both to be well done, I would not put that in. So the the sirloin doesn't take as long as a fillet. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have some mushrooms going in now. Yeah. They're just basically going to get sauteed with yeah. salt, pepper. Yeah. You can add it. some garlic in them. No. I'm going to put a splash of green herrings in them and I'll do the next herbs. I just love to see those lines and that's the good thing about the griddle, it just gives you that kind of, that's what a steak is supposed to look like, isn't it? And you know, you, you always have to seal the steak because it turns without it being sticky on the pan. Correct. Okay. Okay. That one. Add this in. That's the uh, fourth steak going in now. Mushrooms are still cooking already. So that's the uh, roasted peppers out of the oven. Are we going to skin these or yeah, are we going to eat gonna, them? Just let them cool a wee bit and then we'll just try and peel the skin off them. Unless okay. you like that charcoal taste. I think I'm just yeah. going to leave mine like that okay. actually. Just heating the oil to fry some chips and that's the final steak here. <laughs> Enjoying a roast pepper look. Look having a wee refill. Better put it back in the fridge, your dad's not going to be pleased with you leaving it there. Cheers. Cheers. Does it taste any different? It does, it has less. It sits more in your tongue. Now it does it? Than... So is it better or did you, do you prefer it now or before? I mean, I prefer more heavy reds rather than lighter ones. So this is okay, but I would rather drink like something heavier. Right, okay. But does this particular one taste better before it went in the fridge or now that it's been in the fridge? Before. That's not cold. That can't that's cold, huh? Cold there. Ah, is it it's cold. cold. Feel it. How long has that been in the fridge now? Ten minutes. I had more flavour before than it does now. I th I'd say that the loss of that feeling, the oh, that feeling it, it's less now. You obviously don't like a red coming out of the fridge. You like a warmer red as opposed to it being in the fridge. It just It's a matter of taste. And I think, again, the weather depends on it as well. You know, when it's warmer, you prefer your wines to be cooler. I'm not quite... Speak for yourself. I'm not very particular about cooling down my white wines that's either. Right. I'm not well, that, That's fussed. a myth in itself that it should be ice cold. Yes. White wine should not be ice cold. I said, I'm not fussed about... Especially Chardonnay. So well, I'm a Sauvignon Blanc drinker and I'm really not fussed if it's not been in the fridge. So it's it's always a matter of taste. Luke is now tasting the steak, which is kind of a medium rare. What do you think? It's juicier than I thought a dry aged steak would be. Mm -hmm. Is it tastier? I wouldn't say so. You wouldn't? No. So it's not worth... It's got a different flavour to a normal steak. It's got like a... It does have a dry flavour to it without actually being dry, if that makes sense. Do you prefer it? Do you think it's worth it? I think you'll like it because it tastes more like a raw red steak, even though that wasn't anywhere close to raw red. But the flavour's closer to a raw red steak, don't you think? 
I guess we're not sitting down to taste today. No, no, we are going to sit down to taste. I'm going to put the blue cheese on it. All right, okay. Just to taste it before the the blue cheese covers the taste of it. Do you see what I mean? Yes. Yeah, the the flavour, you mean? Yes. I, exactly what you mean about the flavour. This meat is not dry aged. This one here. This is just a standard Scottish fillet. I have this present for meat that's just hung for 30 days and cut steak off it. That's my preference because you taste the beef for what it is. I don't think you get the true taste of the beef. Right, I'm going to taste now and cutting into it. Right, so we're tasting this now. That's a well done steak, isn't it? Oh, that's my that's steak. Right, so. Medium and we're tasting these before Rico actually puts the sauce on it. So that's my steak there. That's exactly how I like my steak cooked. So that's a medium to well done steak. So I, I want to taste it now before the sauce is on it. Cotton it. Oh, it's very tender to cut, it's very tender to eat. I think it does add an extra flavour and I'm going to agree with Luke. You obviously know what I like because that, I think it's, gives it an extra flavour. Gives it a different flavour. It doesn't taste of meat. That depends that's, that's why I, I said I like, would like it. But you don't, I don't like, yeah, yeah. exactly because you, you take your steaks more on the rare side, so you like that rawness mm -hmm. of the meat, whereas that's, I don't. I guess that's what's missing from the flavour of it though, for me, is when you've got that, the the juices in during the cooking process, and you're cooking in those juices, you're recapturing all of that flavour, and for me, that doesn't have that flavour, you're losing that, you're almost losing an element to the meat. I like it because I, I don't get that rawness from it because you two like your rare steaks you're missing the rawness of the steak if the beef is of a good quality then it tastes good it doesn't need 60 days dry aged 30 days well hung beef well fed it's the best and cooked properly so that's the uh, blue, blue cheese, cheese. With port. And the port mixture going on the steaks, and you're just going to sit them in the oven just to just heat the sauce. Yeah, I've got the grill on in the oven, it's heating up just for a few minutes. Just to just heat the sauce through, connect. melt it over the steaks, yeah. and um, yeah. that's the steaks just out of the oven. Put the blue cheese on them. Blue cheese and port sauce. Yep. We have the mushrooms here which have been pan fried and we have the peppers okay chips are just coming out the pan so Rico's just putting them in here just to drain off any of the fat so we have the oven roasted peppers we have the saute mushroom stir in a pan we had some fried chips and the sirloin with the um, blue cheese and port sauce so the wine has been in the fridge for about 15 to 20 minutes and we've taken it out and we're going to pour to taste. You're making sure you're pouring equal measures now? Yeah. And they look equal to me. Rico's been pulled up on not pouring enough wine in my glass, haven't you? Yes. Hence why apparently... Oh! Seriously! Look! <laughs> Honestly! Rico! That! Look! The, the, this one's yours. Right, okay. So, yes, Thomas, you are right. That's what he's been doing. Carry on. I think when Sony Warpaint said that as well at one point. But anyway, this is the wine again. Same sort of smell to the wine. Aromas. I think it's better. You think it's better? Yes. I think the tannins 
are better. Not heavy. Everything's smooth. The flavour, when you taste it around your mouth, I think it's lovely. I think it's a lovely wine. I think it's better slightly chilled. My preference. I'm going to tell you a wee taste of this stuff. Lovely meal, nice steak, it's cooked okay, nice blue cheese sauce, chips, mushrooms, grilled peppers, wine, thank you Thomas for the steaks, they are lovely, and what we're having next week Thomas? So the reason why Rico said what we're having next week Thomas is because Thomas wants to come and cook with Rico. So we are planning that. We haven't decided if it is going to be next week, but I think it's going to be some sort of um, prawn dish because um, Thomas did work with Rico in the restaurant. So uh, yeah, let me taste now my steak. In fact, do you know what? I'm going to take that chip off and I'm just going to taste the steak first with the sauce just to see what it's like. Oh! Truly tastes amazing. I think the steak's amazing. It's so tender. The flavours, I love the flavours. The sauce just adds to it. Let's see if the wine does the same. I'm going to be honest here. It's nice that it's been chilled. It's a red wine, in my opinion. But you're um, not a red wine drinker. And I'm not a red wine drinker, yeah. so a red wine would have to be really special for me to be impressed. I don't see anything special about this red wine. It's an easy drinking red wine. And that's what it claims to be, but that's what Beaujolais is all about and that's why it's probably the most famous individual red wine growing region in the world after Bordeaux obviously. Anyway on that note I'm gonna say cheers and I'm gonna enjoy my steak so uh, cheers and we'll catch you next time. Bye! <laughs>